In this video, I will outline the main tasks an editor will undertake in Editorial Manager. This includes logging in, understanding the editor main menu, distributing manuscripts, handling a new submission, managing the review process, and submitting a decision. Note, as you navigate through the Editorial Manager site, you will see eye icons in various locations, often positioned next to a specific feature. By clicking or hovering your mouse over these icons, you can view informational text, which may also link to supporting articles and videos. If you need to retrieve your username or password, click Send Login Details on your journal's Editorial Manager homepage. To log into your Editorial Manager account, enter your username and password and click Editor Login. Once logged in, you will be brought to your Editor main menu. Clicking your name at the top right of the page will open a drop-down menu, which allows you to change your role. For example, if you wish to switch to your author role to submit a paper or your reviewer role to complete a review, designate your preferred language or update your information, including your username and password. If a journal is set up with only one language, only that language option will be displayed. If you require system assistance, click About, then Contact. This will bring you to the Journal Article Publishing Support Centre, from where you can find a wealth of information and resources relating to Editorial Manager, such as the Editor and Video Guides, as well as links to contact our researcher support team. You can also quickly access FAQs, chat 24-7 and links to the Journal Article Publishing Support Centre through the Resource Centre, which you may open by clicking the question mark icon at the bottom right corner of each page. You may have the option to search submissions and search people. Depending on your role, the Search Submissions option may allow you to search all submissions to the journal or just those assigned to you. The Search People option allows you to search all registered users of the journal. If you are the Managing Editor or Editorial Office and receive all new submissions, these may be found in the New Submissions Requiring Assignment folder. To access the contents of this folder, click directly on the folder name. From the Action column on the left, you will have a number of options for each new submission. The Send Back to Author link allows editors and editorial staff with permission to send a submission back to the author prior to editor assignment. When the editor or editorial staff clicks this link, they can send a default or a customised letter to the author. The submission is then returned to the author for editing and resubmission. Please note that the option to send back to author is limited. Once an editor is assigned, the option may only be used after an editor or editorial staff uses the Edit Submission function. This is most often used when the editor or editorial office has made a change to the submission and the author's approval of the change is required. To assign the paper to an editor to handle, click on Assign Editor. You will see a full list of available editors for the journal. Tick the circle next to the relevant editor's name and click on Send Default Letters to send the standard editor assignment email or Send Custom Letters to customise the email before sending. The submission will then be assigned to that editor for handling. If you are the first assigned editor for a journal that uses a direct-to-editor workflow, you will find all new submissions in the Direct to Editor New Submissions folder. To access the contents of this folder, click directly on the folder name. From the Action column on the left, you will have a number of options for each new submission. If you wish to handle the submission yourself, click on the Assign to Myself button. This will assign you as the handling editor of the paper. The paper will then move to your New Assignments folder in your Editor to-do list. All new assignments will appear in the New Assignments folder. When you invite reviewers, the paper will move to the Reviewers Invited No Response folder. When the reviewers have agreed to review and are working on their comments, the paper will move to the Submissions Under Review folder. Finally, once the required number of reviews have been complete, 
and the paper is ready for your decision. It will move to the Submissions with Required Reviews Complete folder. Next to each folder, you will see red, amber, green color-coded signposts. These colors reflect the length of time the papers within the folder have been at that status, with green indicating the submission is on schedule, amber indicating the submission needs attention, and red indicating that the submission is late. Thresholds may vary as these are defined per journal. To view your new assignments, click directly on the folder name. All new assignments are displayed in a table with an action column on the left. To view the submission, click on the View Submission button. This will download the PDF of the paper to your computer. All of the files that the author uploaded during the submission process can be found in the File Inventory and are built into this submission PDF. Clicking on Manuscript Analysis Services will open a new window showing the Evaluate Manuscript Report. Clicking Go to Report will display the report page. Scope Match at the top of the report is a feature that determines the manuscript topic suitability for a journal. This tool compares the topic similarity of the submitted manuscript with previously published papers, both in this journal and in other journals. For more information on this feature, please watch our Scope Match video. A second part of the report is the ATS or Article Transfer Service list. This is available for journals that are already part of the Article Transfer Service and are feeder journals, that is, journals that are transferring papers to other journals as part of an ATS relationship. The ATS list provides editors with more information on the journals to which they can offer transfer and saves time in assessing transfer suggestions. The Similarity Check Authenticate Results is an automatic check done on all new submissions. This check identifies text similarities which may indicate plagiarism. It does this by comparing a submitted manuscript with both a web repository and the CrossCheck database, which contains more than 50 million published articles from over 200 publishers. The result is an interactive similarity report which highlights areas of similar text content and calculates a similarity index. Click on the link in the action column to view the report. Please liaise with your publisher or other editors if you have any concerns about plagiarism. The duplicate submission check is an automatic check that helps to avoid duplicate submissions to a journal. A percentage will display next to the link in the action column. A high percentage here may indicate that the submission is a resubmission of a previously rejected paper. Clicking the link will display a report which includes a list of similar submissions based on a comparison of title, author list and abstract. The details link provides you with further information about the submission. The reference checking results provide you with links to articles that the system has validated from the references of the submission. This report may also include links to Scopus, PubMed and Crossref if found. The details screen also provides the corresponding author details, as well as a mail icon to email them directly. The submissions abstract, classifications and keywords if applicable. There is an option to add manuscript flags and manuscript notes, which are only visible to editors or internal journal staff. If the article has been transferred from another journal via the article transfer service, this information will be displayed at the bottom of the details screen. The Initiate Discussion option allows you to begin a discussion about a submission with one or more editors of the journal. For more information on this feature, please refer to our video Initiating a Discussion in Editorial Manager. The Assign Editor option allows you to assign the submission to another editor to handle. Clicking on the link will display the list of available editors. The Submit Editor's Decision and Comments link is available to you at any stage in the editorial process. At certain times, you may wish to make your decision without sending the paper for review. Next, we will look at the review process in more detail. For those manuscripts that should be peer-reviewed, click Invite Reviewers. The Reviewer Selection Summary screen is now displayed. The Invite Reviewers menu on the left of the screen provides quick links to relevant items. 
At the top, you will see the journal settings for this article type. This paper will move to the Submissions with Required Reviews Complete folder as soon as two reviews have been completed. The Uninvite After option relates to reviewers who do not respond to the invitation. In this case, if a reviewer doesn't accept or decline within 15 days of the invitation, the system will automatically uninvite them. Unassign After refers to reviewers who have agreed to review but are late with their comments. This option is not typically enabled. If the number displayed here is zero, then the setting is switched off for this article type. If a different number is displayed, then the agreed reviewer will be unassigned once they are this number of days past the review due date. Each of these settings can be changed per submission by clicking Edit, updating the relevant number, and clicking Save Settings. There are several options for searching for reviewers in Editorial Manager. These options are listed under Search Type in the middle of the screen. I will talk through each of these now. At the top of the screen, you will see information on ways to find reviewers using Scopus. Find reviewers is an alternate way to find the best reviewers for your journal. It is powered by Scopus and helps journals to expand their pool of reviewers using everything we know about the research including the authors, reviewers and manuscripts, and the relationships between them. To open this search option, click Find Reviewers Using Scopus. Find Reviewers opens in a new window. You will need to allow pop-ups for this site for the window to open. This tool contains up to six tabs. System Recommendations, Keyword Search, Author Search, interested reviewers, journal reviewers, and editorial board members. System Recommendations displays 100 reviewer recommendations automatically generated for each submission. These reviewers are ranked based on their publication data from Scopus and reviewer history across Elsevier journals. It can take up to 24 hours from the time of submission for these reviewer recommendations to be generated. So if they do not appear the first time you check, please try again later. Co-authors of the manuscript and researchers that have published with the authors in the past three years are automatically excluded from the results. Candidates based at the same institution or from the same country are tagged with red labels. Clicking on a reviewer name displays more information about them, such as their H-index, link to their Scopus profile, Elsevier Editorial History, Content Match, Author Keywords, Scopus Subject Areas, Reviewing History Across Elsevier Journals, and Publication History. There is an option to filter recommendations based on the H-Index, Expertise, Connections, and Review History. Once a suitable reviewer is found, you simply click on Add to Manuscript at the top of the screen. Several reviewers may be added in this way, and you can then return to the submission to invite these reviewers or list them as alternate or proposed reviewers. The Keyword Search tab allows you to perform a keyword search in Scopus. You can add a keyword by typing directly in the Keyword Search field and clicking Add. Add a suggested manuscript keyword by clicking directly on the term or add a classification term, if applicable to your journal, by clicking directly on the term. You can then select the Published Since Year from the drop-down. The search default is All, which will display only candidates who meet all keywords entered. You can also change this to Any. Once you've entered all keywords you would like to search on, click Search. Potential reviewers will be displayed in order of suitability. The conflict of interest checks in Keyword Search are also the same across Author Search, Interested Reviewers, Journal Reviewers and Editorial Board Members. Co-authors of the current manuscript are displayed in the search results. However, they are tagged with a Manuscript Author label and the Add to Manuscript button is disabled.
researchers who've published with any of the manuscript authors in the past five years are tagged with a red published together in the last five years label. Candidates based at the same institution as any of the co-authors are tagged with a red same institution label. Click on a candidate's name to view more details about them. Once you have found a suitable reviewer candidate, click Add to Manuscript. As with the System Recommendations option, several reviewers may be added in this way, and you can then return to the submission to invite them or list them as alternate or proposed reviewers by clicking Return to Submission. The Author Search tab allows you to perform a basic author search in Scopus. You may search on the author's last name, first name, affiliation or email address and must enter a value for at least one field to perform a search. Search results will be displayed in the same way as we have previously seen for system recommendations and keyword search and reviewer candidates can be added to the manuscript as before. The next tab is interested reviewers. This section displays the details of any reviewers who have expressed interest in reviewing for your journal via Elsevier's Reviewer Hub. Candidates will be displayed based on matching works with the author keywords. These keywords can be manually adjusted via the Session Preferences tab, which we will see shortly. Please ensure you evaluate the expertise of any interested reviewers to ensure they are a good match for the subject of the manuscript. Journal Reviewers is an experimental feature at present. Via this tab, you may browse active reviewers from your journal database in Editorial Manager. This list shows top available reviewers with a connected Scopus profile, ordered based on the best match on manuscript keywords. The final tab is Editorial Board Members. This section shows the editorial board members for your journal, as per the Editor Relationship Management Suite. ERMS. The list is currently restricted to editors who have connected their Scopus profile. The default sorting for this list is matching works, but you can change that using the filters at the top of the page or via session preferences. Any reviewers you have added whilst using Find Reviewers will be displayed in the Selected Candidates tab. The Manuscript Details tab displays information relating to the submission such as the title, manuscript number, keywords, classifications, corresponding author, and abstract. The Session Preferences tab presents criteria such as the manuscript keywords, which will be used to identify matching works for author search, interested reviewers, and journal reviewers. The Conflict of Interest tab within Session Preferences displays all candidates included in the automated checks. Candidates can be included or excluded from the checks by using the toggle button and clicking apply changes. For further information on this, please see our video, Conflict of Interest Checks in Find Reviewers. Once you have selected suitable reviewers via the Add to Manuscript option, you may return to Editorial Manager by clicking Return to Submission. You are now returned to Editorial Manager, where you can see the reviewer imported from Find Reviewers, displayed in the Reviewer Candidate screen. Next to the reviewer, you will have three options. You can choose to invite them directly, make them an alternate reviewer, or list them as a proposed reviewer. If this candidate is not registered with the journal, they will be proxy registered when you click Proceed or perform another search. If the candidate is already registered, please select Use this candidate to prevent adding duplicate reviewers to the database. After you've made your selection, click Proceed at the bottom of the screen to proceed with the invitation. We will now return to the Reviewer Selection Summary screen. My publication allows you to search the database of registered users for your journal. First, select your search criterion from the drop-down. Then enter your search term in the value field on the right and click search. At the top of this screen in the change search type box, you have the option to change the search range. The entire database option allows you to search all registered users for the journal, 
including those that do not yet have a reviewer role. Selecting this option can assist in finding relevant reviewers. Any reviewers who meet this search will be displayed in the table below. You will see further information about them, such as classifications linked to their profile and their reviewing history and statistics for the journal. You can select from the three options to invite, make alternate or propose the candidate as a reviewer. Once you have ticked the relevant box, scroll to the bottom of the screen and click proceed to advance to sending the invitations. The next search option is suggested by author. Many journals give authors the option to suggest reviewers for their paper during the submission process. If you would like to invite a suggested reviewer and they are already registered as a reviewer with the journal, click Select Suggested Reviewers. On the next screen, you will see similar details as with the previous search option and may invite the reviewer from there. If they're not yet registered and you'd like to invite them, you can do so by clicking the Register Reviewer button to the right of the screen. Once registered, you can then invite them to review. It is recommended that you don't invite more than one of the author's suggested reviewers to avoid any potential bias in the review process. If your journal uses classifications, the Personal Classifications option allows you to search for a suitable reviewer across all classifications for the journal. The journal's list of classifications is displayed here. If your journal uses a branched list of classifications, you can expand the list by clicking the plus icon. Select the appropriate terms for your search. Click on add and then search for reviewers. The reviewers displayed in the search results have classifications linked with their profiles that match our search terms. You may choose one or more reviewers to invite make alternate or proposed as before. Suggest reviewers gives you the option to search for reviewers based on your own predefined criteria. Click on my suggest reviewer preferences to the left of the screen to configure your personal search preferences. If your journal does not use classifications, it is essential that the people with fewer than X matches to manuscript classifications option is set to zero or the search option will not show any results. Once you have selected your criteria, click Submit. These preferences are now saved for all future searches. To perform a search via this option, first select your search range from the drop-down and then click Search. Matching reviewers will be displayed as in the previous examples. Classification matches allows you to search for reviewers based on the classifications that the author selected for their manuscript during the submission process. The manuscript classifications are listed in the table and you may select one or more on which to search by ticking the relevant box and clicking search by classifications. Search results will then be displayed as we have previously seen. When you have selected suitable reviewers to invite, make alternate or proposed and clicked on proceed at the bottom of the screen, you will see these reviewers listed together on one screen. For the reviewers selected to invite or make alternates, you will have the option to customize the invitation letter. You can also update the number of days a reviewer has to complete the review. For example, if you need a review back more quickly or know the reviewer needs additional time, you may wish to change this number. This will then be reflected in the invitation to that reviewer. For any reviewers listed as proposed, you will have the option to enter a note, perhaps to remind yourself or inform another editor why you have listed them as a proposed reviewer. When ready, click Confirm Selections and Proceed at the bottom of the screen. We will now return to the Reviewer Selection Summary screen. We now have two reviewers invited, with four listed as alternates and two as proposed reviewers. If two reviews are required for a submission, ideally you should invite two reviewers and make four alternate reviewers. Please consider diversity in your invitations, including gender, career stage and global representation.
the invited and alternate reviewers are listed separately. Most journals have automated reminders set up. However, if you wish to send your own reminder to a reviewer, you may do so by clicking Send Reminder. An invited reviewer can be manually uninvited by clicking the Uninvite Reviewer button. The Alternate Reviewer feature is a very useful way to keep papers moving through the review process without needing to invite a new reviewer each time one declines or is uninvited. If two reviews are required, the system will always try to ensure that two reviewers are listed at any given time. If one of those two declines or is uninvited, the system will automatically invite the first alternate reviewer in the list. The list of alternate reviewers can be reordered at any time by dragging and dropping. The bin or trash can symbol allows you to remove an alternate reviewer from the list. To promote an alternate reviewer to an invited main reviewer, click the arrow icon. You also have the option to link an alternate reviewer to a primary reviewer. This is particularly useful if you are inviting a reviewer who is an expert in a particular field. To link an alternate to a main reviewer, click the chain link icon. Select the appropriate primary reviewer and click link reviewer and then OK. This linked alternate will now appear under the primary reviewer to whom they are linked and will only be invited if that person declines the invitation or is uninvited. To unlink an alternate reviewer, click the unlink icon and OK. We will now return to the main menu. This paper is no longer in the new assignments folder as reviewers have now been invited. Instead, it is in the Reviewers Invited No Response folder. You may occasionally receive a request from a reviewer to extend the due date. If this happens, you may locate the paper in the relevant folder and open the Details screen. Find the reviewer's name towards the bottom of the screen and update the due date for their review accordingly. Then click Save and Close. We will now look at how to make a decision on a paper. When the required number of reviews have been completed on a paper, it will move to the Submissions with Required Reviews Complete folder. If you are a higher level editor, you may see papers at two different statuses in this folder. Required Reviews Complete for the manuscripts you have handled and decision and process for the manuscripts that lower level editors have handled and provided their recommendations. To view the comments from the reviewers, click on the View Reviews and Comments link in the Action column. Here you will see the recommendation terms from each reviewer and the lower level editor if applicable. To see the reviewer comments in more detail, click on the recommendation term. Here you can see the comments the reviewer entered for you as editor, and also any comments they've provided for the author. Occasionally, a reviewer may upload a file to support their review. If this is the case, it will be in the Attachments section, and you can download it to view the file. Editors also have the option to reopen the review. If a reviewer submitted their review in error before they were ready, you can use this option to return the review to them. You will follow the same steps to view the comments of any further reviewers. Via the Attachments link in the View Reviews and Comments screen, you can choose to make the attachment available to the author and reviewers. Simply tick the relevant boxes and click Save and Close. You are now ready to make your decision to do this, click Submit Editor's Decision and Comments. From the Decision drop-down, you will see all decision terms available to you and may select the most appropriate for this submission. The Confidential Comments to Editor field will contain any comments the reviewers or lower-level editors entered for your information. If you are a lower-level editor and the paper is going back to the Editor-in-Chief or another editor to notify the author, then you may wish to enter some comments in this box. The Comments to Author field allows you to enter any comments you have for the author. These comments will be automatically pulled into the decision email. 
the individual reviewer comments to authors section allows you to again evaluate the comments from the reviewers. These comments are editable at this point, so you may wish to remove comments that can potentially reveal reviewers' identities or any inappropriate comments. You will have the option to select from a number of editor decision phrases. Any phrases selected here will appear automatically in the decision letter and can save you time in formulating your comments. Once ready, click Proceed at the bottom of the screen. The Draft Decision screen summarises the comments and decision that will shortly be sent to the author. At this point, if the paper moves back to a higher level editor to notify the author, you will select the option to Submit Decision. The paper will then move to that editor to approve your decision and send the decision notification to the author. If you notify the author yourself, you will click Proceed at the bottom of the screen. You will now see the author decision email on screen. This email can be edited before sending. You will notice that the reviewer and editor comments to the author have been automatically pulled into the bottom of the email. If decision phrases were selected previously, they will be auto-populated here. If you did not previously give the author permission to view the reviewer attachment, you have the option to do this again now. Once you are happy with the letter, click Send Now. You can choose to notify the reviewers of the decision also by clicking Send All Letters. The decision email has now been sent. We will now return to the main menu. As this submission is now back with the author for revision, it no longer appears in the Editor To-Do list. If you want to follow up with the manuscript, you will find it in the Submissions with Decision section. This concludes our training on how to handle submissions in Editorial Manager as an editor. Please visit the Journal Article Publishing Support Centre should you require further information. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.